Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 107 of Lightroom Quick Tips. In this episode, we're going to talk about geotagging. Now, before I do that, just let me say real quick, all my videos are free, and they're free because many kind people help me out. If you would like more information on how you could help me create the best free photography how-to videos possible, please look at the top right hand corner of this video you may have to hover over the video to see it and you'll see the letter I click on that I and you'll get some info on how you could help me out all right geotagging what is it well you probably know that your camera when you take a picture that picture has a lot of metadata in it and it will have the date and time the image was taken and it will have you know the ISO and the shutter speed and all that stuff all that's stored in the metadata another thing it could store in the metadata is your latitude and longitude that you know where you were standing when you took that picture now this is great if you have a camera that is GPS enabled unfortunately many of us do not have cameras that are GPS enabled none of my Nikons and none of my Fuji cameras are GPS enabled well well, what happens? Well, when I load my images into Lightroom, if I went to the map module, the map's empty. The, there's no way Lightroom knows where exactly those images were taken. On the other hand, if I did have a camera that was GPS enabled, as soon as I open the map module, the map will be populated with little like flags showing exactly where those pictures were taken. Well, for those of us that don't have cameras with that capability there is kind of a workaround you do need a smartphone and you do need to get an app now I have seen there's some free apps out there but the apps that do cost money do not cost very much money I happen to use this one it's called GeoKit I'm not from affiliated with this company at all I don't even know who they are I just was going through the App Store and I saw this one and I purchased it. It was $2.99. As far as I know, it's an iOS only app, so it won't be available for Android, but they all work very, very similarly. So if you have an Android phone, what I'm going to show you today, as far as the app is concerned, is going to be very similar to the app you get. What I show you in Lightroom will be exactly what you'll need to do. So when we get to Lightroom, all that stuff will be exact. Now, as far as this app and what you do, um, first thing you need to do, this is a screenshot of the app. The first thing you need to do, you need to synchronize the time or the clock that is in your phone and the clock that is in the camera. And it's real easy to do. You would click here and you would just, you know, set the camera time to the time that your phone is showing. And once that is done, you have those times synced. Then as this thing is this app is laying down waypoints with specific times and you're taking pictures with specific times Lightroom will be able to match all that up and you'll get accurate uh, locations for each of the images so you synchronize the time first now this specific apps app has two different modes they have what they call a photography mode and a transit mode and what happens here is the photography mode just lays down more waypoints more frequently. Of course, that's going to use a little more battery power. If you're not taking a lot of pictures, you're in you know transit mode, they call it. It just lays down the waypoints less frequently, so it'll use less power. Maybe your battery's weak. You might want to try transit mode so it doesn't kill your phone. I've never used transit mode. I, mode, I've just used photography mode. I just click on that when you're ready to go. So you have your, your phone and your camera synced as far as the clock is concerned. You get to your location where you're going to start taking pictures. Then you would start photography mode, it's called. And this app will then start laying down waypoints. And it lays down, I found, uh, when I looked at the data inside of these files that it creates, it lays down a waypoint about every 10 seconds or so and as you walk around you'll just take pictures now of course when you take a picture your camera is recording the date and time for each of those images in the image metadata so you go along you take pictures when you're all done you stop the recording so you're not laying down any more waypoints 
Then what you need to do is you need to export that data. And when you click here to export, as far as this specific app is concerned, you could save it to a location in your phone, or you could save it to four different cloud drives, iCloud, Dropbox, OneDrive, or Google Drive. And I've tried saving it to iCloud and Dropbox myself, and it works flawlessly. I prefer iCloud because I could save it to my desktop, and it will show up right here <laughs> on my desktop, so I don't really have to do anything. I save it to my iCloud desktop, and then when I come home and turn on my iMac, it's sitting right there. So now we have this file exported. We went and took pictures. We laid down those waypoints. We exported the file. We're done with the phone. Next, we're going to go to Lightroom. We're going to import our images into Lightroom like we always do. Then what you need to do is you want to go to the map module. And you can see I'm in the map module, obviously. And you make sure that you have your folder that you of these images that we just did. Now, down here in the film strip, you see I have a bunch of images. I just went out Personally, just now, just a little while ago, I went out to Erie Basin Marina here in Buffalo, and I just walked kind of in a circle and took some pictures. And I, I laid the waypoints down, all that stuff, and I loaded that, um, that uh, data file on my desktop, as you saw. So now I have to load it into Lightroom. So I have this folder active. All the images I took just a little while ago are down here in the film strip. To load that data file into Lightroom, what you need to do is go to the map module. And if you look right here, you see this little squiggly icon? You got to click on that. Now, if you don't see this bar at all, this is called the toolbar. And I actually covered this in the previous episode, episode 106. If you don't see this, hit the T key on your keyboard. The T key makes it appear and disappear. So you want to see that. Next, you need the squiggly line. If you don't see that, Go to the far right and you'll see this little downward facing arrow. Click on that and make sure that check logs, <laughs> track logs is checked. Okay, so once that's checked, now you have this squiggly line. Now we're going to click on this and the very first choice is load tracking. We're going to click that and I have a Mac so Finder comes up and I'm just going to go to the desktop because that's where I stored it and there it is right there. It's called GeoKit. Yours, if you're not using the GeoKit app, it will be called something else, but it will have a .gpx um, suffix here. So that is the waypoints. So we're going to load this. So we're just going to click on it and click Choose. And when you do that, you'll, you'll see that your map will reposition to the area you were, and you could see that it laid down the waypoints of where I was. I actually parked right here. I went here and I walked down this way, around this way, down this way, down this way, and I went back to my car. So that's all I did. So now we have the actual track laid down where we walked, or where I walked, but now we have to match the images up to this track. Now to do that, we need to select all the pertinent images. So in this case, it's all the images down here in the film strip. So I'm just going to click on one and I'm going to hit Command A to select them all. If you have a PC, you'd click on one and hit Control A to select them all. Then what you do is you again click on this little squiggly line and you want to go to Auto Tag. Now in this case, it's 76 selected photos. All right, so we just click on that and you could see it just populates the area with these little flags. Now you could see that there's numbers on some of these. That's because I stood here and I took seven pictures from this spot. And if I hover over it, you'll see the picture. And you could cl uh, then go through the, all seven images that I took from that location. All right, then you could come over here and I took two from here. Whoops. One, two. And there I only took one. But you could see as I went through, I took pictures from each of these locations. Probably boring there. Here, let's come down here. Let that go away. 
I took two from that location. So you could see, this is all it is. I took four from here. And now all these images are forever geotagged. And they're right along that route that I walked. So this really comes in handy for those of us that have cameras that aren't GPS enabled. And that's really all you got to do. And as I mentioned, all the apps work very similarly and they're all very reasonably priced. As a matter of fact, I think the most expensive one I saw, at least in the um, app store for iPhone, was $3.99. And there were a couple free ones. So check it out. Hopefully that helps you get your images geotagged. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.